welcome back to my channel if you are visiting this channel for the first time you are also highly welcome in this lecture we'll be looking at ejaculation this lecture will be explaining the structural basis behind the process of ejaculation <laughs> Ejaculation can be defined as the discharge of semen or ejaculate from the male reproductive tract. And this is the configuration of the male reproductive system. Within the male reproductive system, of course, we have the tract through which the semen or ejaculate will run through before it is finally released out of the body. And this will occur after orgasm has been reached, which is the peak of sexual pleasure. So when this occurs, the process of ejaculation will then be initiated. Let's look at the configuration of the male reproductive tract through which the semen or ejaculate will run through before it is finally released to the outside as ejaculates. So before the semen or ejaculate will run through the male reproductive tract, it needs to be produced. This is the testis here arrowed in red. This is where the production of sperm occur before it's finally pushed through the male reproductive tracts before it is then released to the outside, either for the process of fertilization or otherwise. This testes is enclosed in a coat that is referred to as the scrotum, and this is the scrotum arrowed here in yellow. The scrotum is like a protective jacket. After the production of sperm, it is then released through the male reproductive tract, and that will lead us to the part or the movement sperm runs through before it is finally released. So after the production within the testes, it is then pushed into the epididymis. This is the epididymis here, highlighted in black and arrowed in red. This is the region where the sperm is released into. This is a storage site and also a form of maturation also occur within the space. After being pushed into the epididymis, it is further directed into the vas deferens, and this is the vas deferens here, highlighted in green and also arrowed in white. We know that the testis is located outside the body, and it is through the vas deferens that the sperm is directed into the body before it is now directed outside through the penis. So this is the vas deferens highlighted here in green, and as it runs through the vast difference at the terminal end of the vast difference there is a merge with the dot of the seminal vesicle this is the seminal vesicle here harrowed in black the seminal vesicle is one of the male accessory reproductive organs that helps to nourish and also liquefy the sperm so as to have more access to movement when the sperm cells swim in a more liquefied environment, it's going to be able to move faster and also easier without expending much energy to do so. So the seminal vesicle releases its content through the dot of the seminal vesicle, and this merges with the vast difference to form the ejaculatory dot. And this is the ejaculatory dot here highlighted in black and also arrowed in yellow. So this is a short dot that runs a short course. And from the ejaculatory dot, the ejaculate is then directed into the prostatic urethra. This is the prostatic urethra here, arrowed in white. The prostatic urethra is a region of the urethra that runs through the prostate gland, just as the name implies. This is the prostate gland here, arrowed in black. We know that the prostate gland is located at the neck of the urinary bladder, and this is the urinary bladder up here. And as the ejaculate is pushed into the prostatic urethra, also the prostatic gland also releases its own secret into the ejaculate at this region. Also one of the male accessory reproductive organs that helps to nourish the sperm. From the prostatic urethra, it is further pushed down into the membranous urethra, then finally into the penile or the spongy urethra. But before then, we also have another gland here that is called the boboeurethra gland that helps to secrete a pre-ejaculate. The pre-ejaculate is what is initially released into the penile urethra and this is to help neutralize the acidic environment of the spongy or the penile urethra, which is the terminal region of the urethra. We know that the spongy or the penile urethra does not only allow for the passage of semen or ejaculate, it also allows for the passage of urine. And that is why the pre-ejaculate that is released by the urethral gland is used to clean the internal environment of the spongy or the penile urethra before the final release of the main ejaculates. 
So after which the main ejaculate is then released through the spongy or the penile erectra before it is finally released to the outside. It's also good for us to know that the initial production at the level of the testes is the sperm. The sperm is further transformed into semen and this semen of course will be formed because the release from the different male accessory reproductive organs which include the seminal vesicle and also the prostate gland will help add to the sperm that is produced in the testes and this will now give a final configuration that is referred to as the semen. At the initial stage of production at the level of the testes it is the sperm as it runs through the course along the male reproductive tract, different accessory reproductive organs will release their secrets into the dot in helping to reconstitute the configuration of the sperm and transforming it into the semen that is finally released out of the body as the ejaculate. So now going to the process of ejaculation, the structural basis behind the process of ejaculation is what this slide will be explaining, what happens during the process of ejaculation. Before ejaculation can occur, the process of erection must occur. I've done lecture on erection. You can go and check up that lecture to keep yourself updated. Erection is influenced by parasympathetic innervation. For ejaculation to occur, the sympathetic innervation must be activated and this will be triggered by climbers at high threshold. And this will only occur when a critical level of satisfaction has been reached. So during the process of erection and continuous stimulation by the parasympathetic innervation, when a climax is reached, there's going to be the initiation of sympathetic innervation. And what does this sympathetic innervation do in the process of ejaculation? What it does basically is to contract the wall of the male ductile system. We've explained in our previous slide how the sperm is produced in the testes and also need to run a course through the male ductile system. So the wall of the male ductile system is constricted so as to allow the push of the ejaculate down the tract before it is finally released to the outside. So this is what happens. There's going to be the contraction of the wall of the male ductal tract. We said that after the production of the sperm in the testes, it's going to be directed or pushed into the epididymis. This is the epididymis here highlighted in black. The wall of the epididymis will be constricted and this constriction will lead to further push of the sperm into the vas deferens. This is the vas deferens here highlighted in green. The wall of the vas deferens will also be constricted. And this constriction will lead to the push of the sperm along its tract. When it gets to the point where we have the seminal vesicle, so there's going to be the constriction of the wall of the seminal vesicle, so as to help push whatever it is that it has produced into the dot of the seminal vesicle. And we know that the dot of the seminal vesicle will merge with the vast deference to form the ejaculatory dot. This is the ejaculatory dot here, highlighted in black. There's going to be further constriction of the wall of the ejaculatory dot. As this constriction occurs, there's going to be the push or the drive of what is contained within the lumen down it. So there's going to be the constriction of the wall of the ejaculatory dot so that the ejaculate will be pushed into the prostatic urethra. This is the prostatic urethra We've also explained this in our previous slide. That's the region of the urethra that is seen to pass through the prostate gland. This is the prostate gland here, harrowed in black. And above it, we have the urinary bladder. So at this point, within the prostatic urethra, the wall of the prostate gland will also contract so as to push the secret into the lumen of the prostatic urethra. Because we know that the prostate is one of the male accessory reproductive organs that also helps to reconstitute the sperm that is produced in the testes. At this point now, we have the ejaculate within the prostatic urethra. So a critical event will occur at this point, and this event is very, very important. So there's going to be the constriction of the internal urethral sphincter. This is the internal urethral sphincter. The internal urethral sphincter is seen as a guide at the neck of the urinary bladder. This is the urinary bladder where urine is contained, and this is going to be constricted. And why this occurs is to prevent the backflow of semen or ejaculate 
into the urinary bladder because we do not need the ejaculate inside the urinary bladder. Where it is needed is within the prostatic urethra and be pushed down the membranous and also the spongy or the penile urethra before it is finally released to the outside. So we do not need the ejaculate inside the urinary bladder and that is why we have the constriction of the internal urethral sphincter so as to prevent the backflow of the ejaculate into the urinary bladder. So we now have the ejaculate within the prostatic urethra Wait, we then need to be pushed down the urethra. So there's going to be the constriction of the wall of the prostatic urethra at this point, so as to push the ejaculate down the tract before it will be released to the outside. There is another gland at this region, and this is the boboerectral gland. We've also established this in our previous slide. The boboerectral gland, we need to secrete the pre-ejaculate, and we know the importance of this pre-ejaculate. So there's going to be the constriction of the wall of the boboerectral gland also, so as to be able to push it secretes into the spongy or the penile urethra. This will be followed with the final event, which is the constriction of the corpus sponge nosum. If you look at this image down here, this is the transverse section of the body of the penis. We know that in the body of the penis, we have three longitudinal bands of muscle. We have two corpora cavernosa up here. These are the two corpora cavernosa. And inferior to it, we have the corpus sponge nosum, and this is the corpus sponge nosum here, harrowed in black. The two spectacles and the nose below can be used to represent this configuration. So we have the corpus sponge nosum located inferior to it, and within the corpus sponge nosum is where we have the urethra, and this is the urethra harrowed in red. The urethra is seen to pass through the corpus sponge nosum. So taking this configuration here to the penile region, we have the corpus sponge nosum around this region and we see the spongy or the penile urethra running through it. So there's going to be the contraction of the wall of the corpus sponge nosum. So this is the contraction highlighted here in red. So the contraction of the corpus sponge nosum will bring about an intense contraction which will lead to a shooting effect. And that is when the semen or the ejaculate is forcefully pushed out of the penis. And that is when the process of ejaculation is finally seen to have been completed. So this is what happens during the process of ejaculation. We can see that the semen is pushed through the wall of the male reproductive tract under sympathetic innervation. And we've explained in our previous lecture on erection, that erection is under parasympathetic innervation. So it's good for us to be able to differentiate these two. For ejaculation, it is under the influence of sympathetic innervation. And this is what helps to constrict the wall of the male reproductive tract, which finally will help to push out the semen or the ejaculates. So thanks for watching. Let's continue to stay glued to this channel.